Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London and today I'm looking at a book which comes to us from Oxford University Press. It's an important book and it's a big book, this one, it's a hardback. It's called The Law of Security in Title-Based Financing. It's now in a third edition and it's been written by a number of people, Hugh Beale, Michael Bridge, uh, Louise Gulliffer and Eva Lomnika. Um, as I've indicated, it's an important area in, in uh, practice, I think, and also in, for a, a wide range of people involved in the securities area of uh, financing. Um, the title which we've given the review, Elizabeth was the lead writer on this, uh, is the following. Now in a new edition from the Oxford University Press, the definitive title on secured lending, specifically on personal property. And I think that's an important area because that gets to the crux of some of the difficulties that we do have when we're talking to clients. And this sort of work is quite helpful. Let's have a look at it first of all. So we don't knock things over. There's the book itself. It's a heavy book, actually, this one. There we go. Green cover. Heavy. That's the front. Then the spine just has that. It runs to something approaching near, well, 900 odd pages. There we go. The index at the back, very much the style of OUP. The index is by paragraph numbering. You just get to the front of it. There's an actually substantial index, which I think is very helpful. Um, and we get to it, it says there's the index there. Then we get to the book itself, you can see the paragraph numbering and you can see a bit of the footnoting, that's on the very last page. But if we go to the front of the book, there we go, there's the imposing front page. Professor Hugh Beale, Professor Michael Bridge, Professor Louise Gulliffer and Professor Eva Lamnica. So you've got a lot of very erudite people involved in this publication. There's a preface which is well worth reading, uh, which comes from the uh, authors. And then you've also got the contents section, of course, quite detailed, running all the way through. Uh, there are 23 chapters in total. Then you've got the index at the back. And you've got very useful abbreviations. Very important in this area of law because there are an awful lot of abbreviations, many of which are quite difficult sometimes to uh, remember. So I think it's very helpful to have that. Then we've got the table of cases, uh, which run through for quite a way. Then we've got table of legislation. Then after that, we've got, um, as usual, a little bit. Uh, the table of legislation is actually includes international um, legislation and I believe treaties. It has instruments as well. So it's all sort of mixed together. Yes, it has treaties and conventions right at the end. Then you've got part one, which is the introduction. You can see the structure again. Nice little mini index of what's in the chapter at the beginning. So you should find things quite easily. You've got the paragraph numbering, which is you can see on the side there. there and you've also got footnoting. And it runs on like that all the way through. Quite a lot of footnoting in this. As I say, it's a heavy book, 900 odd pages. Make sure it doesn't fall down. OK, so what do we say about the book? To say it's a definitive title in our view um, on secured lending and it's primarily of relevance to uh, personal property which I think is important because uh, I find certainly with my direct professional access um, work that people are coming to me and they get very confused very quickly about what they've agreed to so I think this book does try to set out the law from from four eminent uh, professors uh, what the law actually is at the moment corporate lawyers then dealing with the myriad forms and ramifications of secured lending on personal property specifically will welcome this brand new edition of what is a long established highly readable and famously authoritative legal text published by OUP. The subject matter is vast and characterised by a multiplicity of finely nuanced details and distinctions. Fortunately for practitioners, lucid and precise commentary is provided on <coughs> every pertinent aspect of what is an, a complex area of law and the scope and limits of which are carefully defined. And I will say to you even now that it is much more complicated than people realise and you've got to make sure that you are as fully briefed as possible. Now as the lawyers explain, the remit of the book is quote, is limited 
to security over personal property. A good idea too, I think, which can be understood as all forms of property other than land. They're careful, though, to refer to the difficulty of separating security over land and security over personal property. And I think that's an important uh, matter to bear in mind with things like charges, for instance. Fundamentally, the book deals with the security of loans, which, is, as is pointed out, is an alternative to inviting investment from shareholders or partners who will become part owners of the business. While company debitors, uh, debtors rather, are frequently referred to, um, transactions by non-corporate debtors are also covered. And insolvency, of course, is examined in detail because that's the final, um, the final bit when just everything else has failed. So it's a systematic treatment of consumer credit, say the authors, which is left to more specialist works. So what they're trying to do is to give, and I think they've succeeded, give you a reasonably good overview, <coughs> although this is a complex area. Now it's useful, I think, for practitioners because the scope of this massive subject is summarised in the book's introductory section followed by six further sections which deal with, for example, a description of interests, registration, priorities, enforcement and conflict of laws, all of which could have some bearing if, depending on what sort of case you're dealing with. Now, as is the case with a number of law texts, the final section points to the need to consider reform. In this case, the reform of particular aspects of law governing security over personal property. This and related issues are discussed with the clarity and thoroughness that typify this book. Obviously, it's come to us from four learned professors, and we frankly ex expect nothing less, and that we, we get exactly what we want. And can I just say, on the issue of reform, this is just one of many areas where the reforms are catching up with us very, very quickly, and it's very discouraging to find that insufficient time and and activity is devoted to reform in an era when things are changing very very quickly and we're getting a much more educated uh, general public and changes on an IT scale we've never could really have imagined so I do think reform must be looked at very carefully about the way in which we do things because we are very slow sometimes to adapt um, as I've indicated um, the wealth of the new material <coughs> contained in this volume is spread now over 900 odd pages. And it reflects the principal legislation and the new cases that have emerged since the previous edition appeared in 2012. And all are helpfully listed in the preface, which, and it's always good to read the preface right at the beginning. And two imminent reforms are also looked at. I'm recording this in the um, summer of 2018 and we're looking at these bills the goods mortgages bill uh, business contract terms assignment of receivables regulations 2018 and of course uh, other uh, legislative measures um, as i say we parliament has been preoccupied with brexit but this is an area where other business has to start being looked at as well because the day will come when brexit is finished and we know where we are and we can now look then at, at the urgent reforms of some of our legal um, basic legal statements, if you like, the, the legal systems, the legal uh, rules that we currently have in place that need to be modernised because there is a need to look as up to date as possible and to also strive to keep the balance between um, both the creditor and the debtor. Then, of course, as I indicated, the dreaded word Brexit, about which the word uncertainty prominently looms. And of course, we don't know really where we are. I said the summer of 2018, we're moving now towards a period where in March 2019, we will leave the EU. And we still are quite uncertain about what we're doing. What the authors do here, bearing in mind this book is published um, in 2018, is they state that they've prepared the current edition, and very current it is too, on the basis that the UK's current position as a member of the EU, and understandably uh, they demonstrate a certain reluctance to speculate on the possible effect of the UK's withdrawal. Because frankly, I think that will be for another book. 
another edition of this book once we know where we stand after March the 29th, 2019. So let me conclude by saying that one assumes in anticipation and hoped, hope that the advent of, of exit day, which is not, as I said, that what far off, will necessitate another new edition of what I think is a very distinguished legal text from OUP. Few practitioners grappling with the intricacies of this area of law um, will we'll need to go no further because it is an indispensable resource for you and it's written by the people who basically know the law more than anyone else. So a very big thank you to the authors and to OUP for producing another first class edition and the publication date is cited at 2018. Let's have a look at it again. The Law of Security and Title Based Financing. The title isn't exactly the most riveting on earth but when you understand the wording, you'll understand what the book is really about. Uh, let's just open it up. Financial devices involving the transfer or retention of title. Very important. Again, it's very technical to some people, but you understand immediately what it's about. There's the paragraph numbering. You can see substantial footnoting to justify assertions made and to give you the research. Uh, a lot of useful case law commentated, uh, commented on. And again, as I say, you've got a whole range of, of areas covered. This is exceptions to the uh, Nemo Dat rule, which are covered again in Chapter 14. Again, you can see the structure all the way throughout. It's a substantial work. And as I've said on many occasions to both students and uh, in writing, um, we cannot do our work without having books of this standing. And availability to us because you make the law so much easier and it makes my job and those of uh, both in court and on the bench much easier when we're dealing with clients so a big thank you to all um, and that's meant um, in grateful recognition of the work that you've put in to help us because the bottom line is I'm advising the client and I've got to seek or get certain things by going in front of a judge so I'm very grateful for the information we get thank you to all Bye-bye.